Hello and welcome to the Topic in Depth series, episode one, which is on angles in parallel lines, which is kindly supported by Tez. I'm Craig Barton and I'm here in Tez HQ in Sheffield and I'm joined by Joe Morgan. Hello, Joe. Hi, okay. Craig. Now, Joe, first question is, why on earth are we doing Topics in Depth? What's going on there? Um, a few years ago when I was going to conferences, I noticed that all the sessions that um, were being run at conferences were quite general. Right. So there was nothing that seemed to be about how to teach particular topics, but there were lots of these broad ideas about pedagogy and uh, problem solving yep. and creativity and maths. And I thought, actually, the thing that would have been helpful during my teacher training would have been to actually be told how to teach each individual topic. If we're teaching kind of over 300 topics in secondary maths, yes. how do we actually... Um, explain the concepts and what resources should we use and what will the misconceptions be and I kind of felt that was missing from my training and was something that everyone would benefit from and it just seemed to be a bit absent from conferences and um, since then there's been a big surge in these things so if you go to a conference now lots of people are doing very topic specific stuff so it's really it's really got a lot better since then um, the other thing was um, just to tell a little story about a colleague of mine <laughs> why not <laughs> um, I was working um, I was teaching year seven and I was working with a with a shared class yep. um, with a, a, a PE teacher who was teaching maths for the first time and he was doing a great job and he was um, he was lovely to share a class with and he only taught my class once a week okay. and he um, he came to me and said what should I teach next next time I see them and I said um, I looked at the scheme of work and there was um, equations and there was angles. Ooh. So I said, um, angles. well, I went for the algebra. Sure. So, yeah. So I said to him, could you please do angles? And I just sent him the extract from the scheme of work, which was a few bullet points, sure. you know, um, estimating, drawing, reading angles, um, angle facts, problem solving, that kind of thing. All the big names. Yes. And, um, and then a week later, he came to me and he said, um, what should I teach next? And I said, you're doing angles. I'm doing equations. You know, this is, this is a whole half term's worth of stuff. And he said, oh, I've done angles. One lesson. One lesson. Wow, One okay, lesson. Okay. And the thing is that this isn't this isn't me criticizing him at all. Sure. Because I realized um, I'd really let him down because I was an experienced teacher. He was brand new to teaching maths and I just sent him that list of bullet points. Yes. And what I should have done was sat down with him and talked about um, the misconceptions and the things he needs to look out for and what, what these year sevens would have done before on angles and where the topic would go and all those things that would uh, would have supported him to teach it I mean, really well. In other well. words, you might say you needed to give him info on the topic in depth. <laughs> in depth, exactly. Hence, hence the exactly. series. Now, you've worried me a little bit here. How many, about 300 topics. Tell me why not doing 300 of these videos. Well, I, mean, I intended to make a topics in depth presentation for every secondary maths right, topic. Okay, okay. And I've only done about six of them because they take so long to write. Because when I write them, I have to really research the topic. Um, I have to really think about my teaching of it. And, yes. and, and actually, when I write these presentations, I totally change the way I teach the topics. And um, so I haven't got that many of them. I'd like to have one for every single topic. But the idea is that a department um, looks at the scheme of work and they say, well, what are we, what are we teach? in the next few weeks in our department meeting let's run one of these sessions ah, so someone okay. will stand up and present on um, how to teach the topic that's coming up and everyone will sort of contribute with their resources and all that sort of thing yes. and um, that's the idea so they're meant to be 45 minutes uh, to an hour to fit into a department meeting um, and you're meant to do it just before you teach that topic I like it. And then, again, that solves a big problem, which is departmental meetings often get bogged down in admin stuff, Absolutely. generic stuff, it, yeah. whereas this is hopefully to help people do these topics in depth, get all the misconceptions, resources, yeah. and everything. So it's about it's about planning in depth yep. and sort of doing your research before you start teaching, which is something teachers really don't have enough time to do. Absolutely. But it's also about teaching in depth. So not teaching something at a really superficial level. So not yes. doing an in one lesson on the entire topic of angles. But actually, quite often, when, when people talk about things like mastery and they're told to spend half a term on fractions, mm. a lot of teachers are really panicky. Like, yeah, how yeah, can yeah. I keep going on fractions Absolutely. for that long? Um, and so I'm trying to address that that idea of teaching in depth and spending longer on a topic and not just skimming the surface of it. So that's something I've really focused on in these Joe, sessions. Joe, you've sold me on the dream of this. Now, this could be a big anticlimax if it's a load of rubbish, what you've produced there. I don't think it's a load of rubbish, well, I think you're going to like it. Yeah. Now, for the benefit of the, the viewers here, the, these PowerPoints, there's going to be available to, to download Same. from your website, but yep. also all these resources. First thing to say is they're free. Yes. And they're all Google Googleable. Yes. So you can access them all. If you're mm -hmm. watching this, you can find these resources. Absolutely, now. Yeah. Okay, Joe, right, let's get cracking. So what, what are we, we're doing angles in parallel lines. We are. What yeah. are we starting with? Well, the interesting thing is that this is actually if you look at the progression of angles. Okay, so yep. we've got um 
the measure of turn, and let's say that starts in primary school where you kind of make an, you sound like a robot and you're saying, I'm doing a quarter turn. Yep. And that's kind of what your very young children in primary school are first looking at where they get that idea of what an angle is. Okay. That's really complex. Of all the things we teach in angles, the idea of a measure of turn is the most complex. I don't idea. think I've ever taught that. No, which because is they, 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 they come, no, but they come to us knowing that. Oh, right, okay. And I can't, I'm not saying that every year seven understands measure of turn. Right. But they, that's what the primary school teachers have the tough job. Because they get a sense themselves. of what, what kind of age kids meet these? When did they first, um, when they first it, encounter it, 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 it was really interesting. They, my, my daughters who do Kung Fu, in <laughs> their, kung, go, in their kung Fu lessons, the teachers will say to them, put your legs at 90, oh, feet at 90 degrees. Okay. And they're saying that before they've ever been taught what 90 degrees ah, is. Okay. So actually they're hearing it in life from quite a young age. Specifically um, by the medium of Kung Fu. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> kung Fu. But um, the, I think in year, let's say from my own daughter's experience, I think sort of year two wow, was okay. when she first started looking at say right angles what age is that like just that. for international um so say six or seven years old they're cool. really sort of starting to look at the idea of i think she might have even first seen acute and obtuse last year but only a little bit okay. but they do it throughout primary school they do tons of it and um angles is a is a big topic on the primary curriculum um but w w they come to us and, and we kind of have this assumption that they understand what an angle is sure. so that's why a lot of secondary teachers have never had to go into what do we mean by Got an it. angle Got it. um but if you look at the progression there's all the stuff about drawing and measuring using a protractor um then you've got your angle facts, straight lines around a point, your angles and triangles. Now, that's all done in primary school. Yes. And then when you get onto angles and parallel lines, that's kind of the first big secondary topic got that's it. on there. Now, I um, I have two other, I have, sorry, I have one other topics in depth session on angles, and that covers straight lines and the angles and triangles. So we're not talking about those today. Well, that's a little teaser for later in the series. Yes. I like what you've so done. So I have, I, have, I have a whole, the sort of the basics of angles got covered it. there. But we're uh, focusing in on that parallel We're lines. focusing on parallel lines. And the thing is, um, I put a little star by it because angles and parallel lines the the term upsets some people because we say in and I, I don't know angles on parallel lines angles around parallel lines in america they call it parallel transversal angle relationships which is perhaps a bit more uh, a bit more precise <laughs> not quite as catchy but, um, really. angles in parallel lines um yeah some people are a bit unhappy with that name never thought that before so i'm, I'm learning are they in them i don't know okay, but um good. so that's what we're talking about today but yeah the topic goes on angles kind of continues but at a level you're really just looking at kind of trigonometry and you're not really doing much else in terms of angle geometry. But angles is, as we know, a big thing from primary through to GCSE. Got it. Um, and in primary school, if you think about what they need to know, so just looking at angles and parallel lines, the bits they need to know that they get from primary school, they, they get the, what does parallel mean? Yes. And we still do a bit on that. Yes. But they, they do get the idea of what parallel is. Um, they, they should have seen those arrows before okay. to, donate parallel, uh, to denote parallel lines. But again, we will probably mention that again. Um, but they've certainly seen that before. Acute, obtuse and reflex, they do that so much. Yes. And actually, it's it, often you get secondary teachers who do a lot. Like I've known teachers take the kids outside looking for acute yeah, angles yeah I've been there and the thing is you don't need to spend that no, long because no. they've done that since yes, year two yes. like they, that's the one thing they probably already know yes of all the things in angles they've got their acute obtuse and reflex most of the time um, also at primary school they've seen their types of triangle they've mm. seen isosceles and they've seen scalene and they've seen equilateral before now it's important to say this is all kind of prerequisite knowledge they need this but a quick assessment should, should be should absolutely be fine, yes right? so we secondary. can't really do parallel lines unless we know they can do this but they got it all at primary school and we should you know actually that's a that's a example stats question wow. it wasn't it wasn't in the actual stats it was a question that the um the government had in the pack of what we mean by yes, working at, yes, at a yes, certain yes. level, expected standard. And I think that's quite surprising. Yeah, with the um, notation and everything. Yeah, as well, but right? the interesting thing is that even though we see parallel lines there, it's not the parallel lines, it's not testing oh, angles and parallel lines, right. it's testing do they know angles in the parallelogram. Yes, sure, so they do sure. angles in the parallelogram and the opposite angles being equal at primary. It's flipping hard that, isn't it? That, that's a tricky question. And I think the notation surprised me there with the sort of angle symbols on the and the ABD and you know that kind of thing. So yes, I I was surprised to see that that level but um but when i saw this i thought oh, i had no idea they did angles and parallel lines at primary school but they, they don't, don't. Okay. it's the parallelogram got it um in years let's say years five to seven there's other things that they need to know in order to do angles in parallel lines and yes. that's your angle facts so angles around a point adjacent angles on a straight line um angles on a triangle <sighs> angles on a quadrilateral vertical opposite yeah. they all come up yeah. in this topic now i have 
always taught this stuff in year seven, and then in year eight we do angles and parallel lines. Yep. I know that the white rose scheme of work and a few other ones has it all together in year seven. Yes. And I think there's pros and cons of that. I think it's actually, I think that I quite like to have them separate. So I do all the basic angle stuff in year seven, which is a recap of primary, but also greater depth. Yes. And then I come back to parallel lines in year eight. Um, but some people are doing them all in one chunk. Got it. And actually, I think some scheme of, schemes of work don't give it enough time because this is such a big topic. I tell you, the small that screen I've, I've literally never seen before in my life. You What's know, that? that bottom left, that the angle notation, yeah. the, the little angle sign for it. Is I that think, a common um, thing? They do that a bit more in America than we do here. Uh -huh. I tell you what's really interesting: the third one along with the hat on the bit. Yeah, you know that I one. Like yeah. Hat, yeah. Did, did I tell you about the time I got some abuse on Twitter for that one? <laughs> no, okay, go on. Because <laughs> I wrote, I wrote, um, I wrote a question on Twitter. Um, I was asking about notation. You know when, when you see it says ABC and we assume it's the acute angle and we don't assume it's the yes. reflex angle yeah, yeah, or the yeah. obtuse. Yeah. We don't assume it's the reflex. And I was asking about is there a notation? Like how do we, if we want the reflex <sighs> angle, how do we write that? And there were some interesting answers about how GeoGebra does it and things like that. But um, an American teacher replied and said, um, that he he basically thought I was I was asking about the hat and he was right. he thought I was saying you know what's this hat notation and he said I've never seen that in my thirty years of teaching and, and that's wrong and I said well no actually in this country we do it quite a lot and the funny thing is that um, I then searched high and low for a textbook that had it and couldn't find one wow. and then I thought I'd made it up so I had to go and ask lots of teachers no, has anyone seen the hat um, like and that. actually I have found it in some older English textbooks oh, so it's certainly but yeah so the the one on the left is definitely not a massive thing in this country but used quite a lot in other countries. Got it. Got it. And the, the middle two are used a fair amount um, in this country. I love but that. we need our students to know all of those things. And in fact, suddenly we start talking about theta. I mean, and that's that's confusing. Because or Greek that, to that, me, Joe. Well, that might be the first bit of Greek, um, the first Greek letter they see, because they might not have met pi yet. Um, and you know why are we using theta? I mean, I love it that we're using theta, yeah, but it, yeah, is, yeah. it is a bit of a surprise to students because they won't have seen that at primary. Okay, okay. So we've got all these things that they've done in years five to seven, and then as you say, we assess before we teach angles and parallel lines. We assess the prerequisite knowledge, so we might just give them general angles questions to yes, just check yes. what they know. Um, the funny thing is that when I've gone to teach it in year eight before, and I've given my class these particular questions, they can't do any of it, yeah. and then I have to go back and teach a bit of angles again. Sure, of course. And that's why that's why I think it's a nice idea to separate them because if you just taught angles and then you go on to angles and parallel lines you're not having that chance to revisit angles yeah, so I actually yeah, quite yeah. like having this in year eight so I can say let's go back to a bit of basic angle stuff and revisit and that. it's worth saying right that if, if the kids struggle with any of this there's no point just cracking on with angles and oh, parallel definitely lines not. it's all going to be a disaster this right? is absolutely prerequisite like you can't do angles and parallel lines mm. if they don't know how to just deal with basic angle facts if they don't know vertically opposite angles the whole topic is lost on them so you just can't carry on got it um so, yeah, I'd say once they're ready with this, then we can start angles in parallel lines. So this has all been a little teaser, right? So we've not even gone near well, yeah, the parallel so lines yet. It's all the pre parallel. So let's, okay. say, let's say we're ready for it now. Okay, and we're, we're, we're confident that we're ready for this, um, this topic. Um, now... I didn't. I never used yeah, the word transversal, do you? I'm glad it? you've said that, no, mm. never. Well, it's only because I follow a lot of American teachers and I notice that, and they talk quite a lot about, I think it's quite a big topic in the States, right, angles okay. and parallel lines. Um, so they, they talk about it quite a lot on Twitter and there's a lot of resources and they always use the word transversal and yeah. I've never used it in my teaching. I think I've, um, it's become more popular in this country now, but um, I find it really helps me clarify those angle facts. I'll come to that okay. later when I talk about the facts about how I use that word. But um, I always like to talk about the etymology. So this is from the Latin lying across. Nice. Um, and the thing about this is um, it's just a line that lies across um, any lines. They don't yes. have to be facts. So an incorrect yes. definition would be a transversal is a line that cuts through two parallel lines. Ah, That's wrong. Okay. A transversal is actually a line that just crosses at least two other lines. Okay. So if a line is cutting across at least two lines, it's a transversal. And it's, it's worth saying here, you, you love as much as me the old example, non-example, oh, right? Yeah, There's a bit yeah. of potential there for what is a transversal, what isn't a transversal, Absolutely. and so on, right? Absolutely. Uh, oh, look. Oh, <laughs> there <laughs> it no, is. Perfect. It's almost as if I've uh, seen yeah. this before. No, that I, got, I got that from an American resource. And actually, notice something they do in America that we don't necessarily do so much here is they label angles with numbers. Um, so like you wow. know, so they've got an, an, an angle one, two, three, and four, and we don't really do that because we call them letters, or we yeah, or we yeah. use um, like x's and y's. I like them numbers, you know. No, but the thing is, it's confusing because oh. it's not one degree, is it? You know. No, so... but I'll tell you what is. 
I'd take that ahead of whenever you're labeling a line A and B, and then you've got like an angle A, then it all kind of kicks off. Yeah, but I, I mean, I it's like lower case for, you know, there's, so yeah, we have our conventions, but I think the, I I've, like I've used these uh, American resources for my students before, and they've said, why, you know, what, what does that mean? Two degrees? It's like, obviously, ah, it doesn't mean right, two okay. degrees. Right. I mean, that should be obvious to them, but. I'll we, let that one go for now. But they can get used to it, though. But yeah, these are, these are, we have, so I would show my students this transversal and not a transversal. Yes, yes. And for each one, I, I'd use the words. So I'd say, this one's a transversal because it's crossing two lines. This one's a transversal because it's crossing two lines. This, and then once I got some non-examples, this one is not a transversal because it's only crossing one line. Got so I'd, be, I'd use the wording really carefully. And it's worth choice. saying that that's far more powerful than to try and come up with some definition that the kids oh, just yeah, they, they get muddled up with yeah, the words and so yeah. on. Word, examples and non-examples, yes. absolutely yeah, right it's forward. just, you know, we can have a wordy definition, but you know, Don't it's stick. not clear Doesn't until stick. until you show the examples and the non-examples. Got it. Um, and then this is interesting because I never thought of teaching it. I'm not used to go straight in with the um, the corresponding yeah, and yeah, the yeah. alternate. But actually, if we look at it before we even before we even go near those words, okay. we just understand the concept here. So we have eight angles. They're formed by parallel lines and a transversal. So okay. if you've got a pair of parallel lines crossed by a transversal, you're always going to have eight angles. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're all congruent or supplementary. So supplementary being they sum to 180. Yeah. Ah. So all those angles there. Can I just ask you, right, yeah. f and forgive my ignorance here, is, supple is that what supplementary always means, sums, sums to 180? It doesn't it just, just mean sum to 180. But it's it always means, a sum to something, No, it? it always means sum to 180, but it means oh. two angles at sum to 180. And actually the definition, oh. I always, I've taught it wrong in the past, where I've said angles in a triangle are supplementary, which is not right, because it's um, a supplementary means specifically two angles. Wow. Oh. That's in my other angles in depth teaser, session. Teaser, teaser, I like that. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I tell, and this is another example of how maths is an absolute nightmare for kids, right? Because you come out of an English lesson with the word supplementary in your head. Mm. You're not thinking angles, are you, straight away, right? No, but there is something, there's 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 a, a shared sort but of not meaning there. There's no angle and no 180 in there, right? Yeah, but the idea of supplementing something yeah. to sort of bring it up to yes, 180 yes, so yeah, I have an yeah, angle yeah. and then I kind of supplement it so, so there, there is, is a link there is a okay, connection I'll take that. um but yeah so if you look at those eight angles so like for example angle two and angle three are congruent yeah angle two and angle four are supplementary, supplementary I like and it. everything there angle two and angle six are congruent everything there is either congruent That's with another nice. angle or supplementary um and it's such a simple idea I like that um and we can explore that I mean, this is a lovely bit Hello. of, um, you know, you can you can find those these if you Google them. And this is just, I've made a gif of me playing around with it. But in the, nice. in the classroom, I'd have this on screen and we'd, I'd be playing around with it live. Yes, yes. And the idea there was they were, um, I'm going to go back and show you again. They were parallel. Yes. And when I move the transversal, um, notice how the angles yes. on the two parallel lines don't change. Yes. So whatever I do with the transversal, I have those pairs. Everything is I identical. Like it. But as soon as I have non-parallel lines, and I've specifically gone for vertical instead of horizontal because students don't normally see them as vertical. As soon as they're not parallel, we don't have those matching angles That's anymore. That's nice. Um, so I I would certainly show this and ex and sort of play around with it um, and just get that sort of idea across of you have to have the the, the lines have to be parallel to have those eight angles that it's where it's all matching. And that's more examples and non-examples again, it right? Absolutely, nice yeah. Joke. And it's a really nice tool for showing that. So we've got this simple idea. You've got two parallel lines cut yep. by a transversal. Yep. You've got four acute and four obtuse. I'm and unless they're all right angles. Okay. Yeah. But so we've as long as as long as they're not all right angles, four are acute, four are obtuse, and all the acute ones are congruent to each other, and all the obtuse yes. ones are congruent. Yes. So in this case, all the thetas are acute and they're all exactly the same. Got it. And just on the right angle point, often it's worth whizzing that as a little probing question there, isn't yeah, it? Can yeah, anybody yeah. think of an example where that isn't true? Yeah, you're right. I get yeah, that's thinking. nice. Yeah. I like that joke. And no, all the acute. So, so basically, we haven't even gone anywhere near the kind of you know corresponding alternate. But straight away, I could then give them um, a set of numbers, and they'll know all the numbers. So I could give them one of those angles, and they'll yes, know the other seven. Yes, yes, yes. Because all the acute are the same, and all the obtuse are the same. And they can see which ones are acute and obtuse, because they really know those words. Yes. So then I'd ask, why are they all congruent? So why are all the acute ones the same? Why are all the obtuse ones the same? And we can look at that lovely idea of just sliding down the transversal. So there's my angles on the parallel line. I slide them down the transversal. Of course, they're identical. Beautiful. Because the bottom line is parallel to the top line. 
And this is, I mean, angle, all geometry topics just scream out for a, a nice use of technology, right? And yeah. it's it's having these resources up your sleeve where mm-hmm. you, I mean, that's a bank of it. You get, you you know, you use for years and years and yeah. years, right? We're, we're with any class that yeah. are doing this. And it's, this is what I like about this Topics in Depth series uh, supported by Tez is that, it's, it's, it's allowing teachers to have access to this bank of five-star yeah. resources mm-hmm. that are just ready for Yeah, so ready for I've action. Googled it. I found that. I've put is. a link in the bottom. Now anyone now else can use it. now you're about it. So yeah, everyone, so, so people, people don't have to search for this now because I found a good one. There's tons like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I really like the... Um, I mean, I've made a GIF of it just to put in this slide. Sure. But, you know, like I say, you'd have that on... You'd use the GeoGebra. I don't yeah. know I don't know how to use GeoGebra. Someone else has done you've that and that. I'm borrowing it. And you it. can move it around yeah, with the pink dots and stuff. Lovely. So then we can ask questions like this sam said he could determine the measure of every angle in figures a and b without actually measuring the angles if he knew just one ah, nice. so we can see that in figure a if i gave them if i gave them angle two yeah then yes they could work out the rest because they know angle two three six and seven are all the same yes. as angle two yes and we know one four five and eight are all uh, supplementary to angle two and yes. they're all the same yes and we know we can't do it in figure b because they're not parallel but he can do some of them uh, if we yes, you're right. If we gave them um, say angle two, we could do all the yeah, top ones. Yeah, we just can't do the bottom ones because it. there's no relationship. Um, so that's kind of the big idea. And then we and I've done this with um, I've done this with sort of a borderline year eleven class before where like they, higher foundation. Um, so they were they were foundation and 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 it was like they'd never seen parallel lines before. Right, right, right. So I but but when I showed them this, they were they were so happy with it that that they said they were like how this is the easiest topic in the world because I'm saying to them tell me what angle four is. Of course they know because they're looking at the acute and obtuse. Yes. Angle four is acute. It's sixty five. Angle two is acute. It's sixty five. Angle eight is acute. I like this. A couple of things I like about this. I like the fact that there's no mention of alternate corresponding mm-hmm. or anything that's going to start confusing students mm-hmm. already. Because that that's the awkward bit about this yeah. this topic, isn't it? So kids are going into learning that with confidence, yeah. feeling good about this topic, and essentially the, the basic understandings that there, there isn't it at this point that the relationships between those that that's, yeah. that's built so in. So the that's why been developed. is there? The, the yeah. sort of the, and also the numbers. And all we haven't done is talk about the vocabulary. And then later on, if they're saying angle five is. 65 yeah. and I can say but it's obtuse and we've already talked about this idea it can't be 65 yeah. because we have acute and obtuse here like it. so it's that sort of coming back to that when we get to the more complicated stuff so then without introducing any wording I'm just giving them examples with numbers yes. so I'm not going near the definitions yet I'm just and if you I mean if you look at that top one big is big and small is small I mean I'm not sure about the vocabulary that I'd kind of rather I think say it's technical I yeah. like that. but the idea that Oh, well, I've got a, a 55 in that middle one, and there's no way G and F are 55 because yeah, they're obtuse yeah. angles, and E is going to be 55. So yes. we haven't gone near any of those kind of rules. Or and there'd be yet. nothing stopping you chucking another little non example into the mix there just to keep them on their toes. Absolutely, but well, without parallel lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. And actually, um, speaking of that, <laughs> 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 um, this is this one um, they find quite tricky at this yeah, point. Yeah, wow. And this is CIMT, so yeah. classic. And they. Um, I find this really interesting because when you when you explain this, if they haven't got it, when I explain it, I'm sort of moving my arm across. Yes, like, look, yes, if we look yes. at the line AB, if I move that across to CD, yeah. the angles it's have changed, the same, so yeah, they're yeah. not parallel. But if I was to take the line AB, I get my meter ruler out and I move it across to CF, sorry, to EF, the angles Pretty are the much, same, yeah, so those lines are parallel. I like that. So like, yeah, there's like that. you're you're right. It's that's quite tricky for them because it's they don't normally look at things in reverse. Like yes. you know, that is it parallel? It's normally this is parallel. And I t- I'll tell you what. I just in my t- I don't know if, if this this is the same with you, Joe. My teaching I think it's gone through kind of three stages. One that lasted about twelve and a half years. I didn't make enough use of non-examples, mm-hmm. so they were just oh, yeah, pretty yeah. neglected. I don't know why so, I didn't no, do that. I don't yeah. know what I was thinking. Um, then when I got a bit obsessed with non-examples, I would use them a lot in the introduction to a topic. But then I, don't, I, I kind of then assume, okay, we've, we've boxed that off, so let's just keep going with things that work, examples. Whereas now what I'm trying to do is constantly refer back to non-examples. So like you have mm-hmm. there, so we've established parallel and non-parallel and the relationships, done a bit of practice where it works, but then keep chucking into the mix resources that force kids to confront instances where something doesn't work. Absolutely. I think it's really important. Yeah. Lovely resource. Like CIMT, they know what they're doing. Oh, they, they really resources. do, yeah. They'll come up time yeah. and time again in this series yeah. of topic in Yes, depth. definitely. Um, so... Bear in mind that so so far we haven't looked at any definitions. And wouldn't it be <laughs> yeah. nice if we could just say that's angles in parallel lines? Yeah, I mean, we that's work what I'm out the numbers. And the thing is that that's unfortunately that's not what 
Mass GCSE is about. In Mass yeah. GCSE, we need a definition and we need some words to go with it. Yes. And that's quite frustrating because we know the numbers. Yes. And so what we're going to do next is talk about how we teach the definitions and how we get them to memorise the definitions. We're not worried about the numbers at this point. Let's say they can work out the numbers and get them right. Okay. It's just getting them to give the right rule. So that's what we're going to look at next. I love it. Okay, so teaching the definitions. And what I've changed in my teaching here is um, doing it one at a time okay. and not doing all those definitions in one lesson. Yeah, I think I've been there. So been um, there. there's been, and in fact, if you look at a lot of resources um, that are available, PowerPoints that are available to download, you'll often see um, we're doing the three, um, so we're doing co-interior corresponding and uh, alternate angles in one go, yeah. in one lesson. It's too much, right? There's a, there's a lot going on here and there's a lot to talk about and it's it's actually worth just taking them one at a time. So I'll, Maybe I'll going in depth with them, Joe. Perhaps being just, just a little bit more depth. <laughs> a little bit more depth on the definitions. Now, corresponding angles, right? So they're on the same side of the transversal, and that's yes. the key. So there we've got that word transversal that I never used to use. Yes. But they're on the same side, and, and that's really important. They're in corresponding positions, and that's where the, the corresponding. Yes. So they're in corresponding positions, they're called corresponding angles. So they're in the same position in relation to the line. So if the angle is under the parallel line, it will be under the parallel line on nice. the other one. Let me let me ask you this. Are you, you opening up with that definition for the kids? Or are you showing them? A, um, a, yes, well, I'll show you it? what I do with it. So I'll say, and the thing is, this is interesting because these aren't parallel, these ones. Yes. So actually, I think just now when I was saying that definition, I was saying parallel lines. And I shouldn't have said that. Right, okay. Because corresponding angles don't have to be on parallel lines. They're just on any lines. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so corresponding angles are on the same side of transversal and in corresponding positions in relation to the lines, not the parallel lines. Wow, so okay. these are all corresponding That's angles. That's confusing, isn't it? Hey? Well, it's, the definition of corresponding just means same side of transversal in, in corresponding positions. I mean, of course I knew that. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's well, nothing wow. to do with parallel lines. Right, okay. So these are all corresponding angles um, and they're not on parallel lines. <sighs> Um, so actually, quite often you read incorrect definitions of this. Because even, that's what's screaming out to me there is just when we write down corresponding angles are equal. It's wrong. We should never say that. So it is exceptions in the GCSE, but mathematically that is nonsense. Corresponding angles are not equal. Corresponding angles are equal if they're on parallel lines. Wow, okay, right, yeah. okay. So okay. I've written that right there. Saying corresponding angles are equal isn't equal, quite right. right. Let's not say that. We should say corresponding angles and, on parallel and lines And just let me equal. get my head around the kind of sequencing of this. So are mm. you going definition... And then showing kids example the four illustrations of it, or are you um, going illustrations and then say what do you think the definition is? Well, what makes most sense? No, to I think you? I think I'm giving them the definition, but then I'll show you in a second the way that I would I would keep saying the definition when I show examples. Okay. And um, first of all, just understanding where the definition comes from, um, and that's just that slide down. They're, yes. they're on the same side of the transversal. Yes. And they're in a corresponding position. This is a Don Stewart slide that I've made a gif of. So and we're back to, but we're specifically talking parallel now. For the we are talking equal. parallel. I mean, the, the fact that they're equal, and again, that, that sentence there, it yeah. doesn't say, I mean, no one ever says on parallel lines. But not, yes. not till now, Joe. Not, <laughs> not till we've seen this. If we want to explain why they're equal, it's back to that idea of we can slide the angle down okay. the transversal. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, we can think about F shapes. We can, because that's, I mean, that's how I always taught it. I always taught them to think about F shapes. But actually, better would be that when I show them this slide, which I've been showing for years, mm -hmm. I've been showing mm -hmm. for the last 10 years, I've said the F can be in any position, yes, the F can I've be facing that. any I've way. That, yeah. But actually, what I do now is I point to the first one, I'll probably show them one by one, and I'll say the angles are on the same side of the transversal in corresponding positions. Then I say the next one, the angles are on the same side right, of the transversal okay. and they're in corresponding positions. And okay. I do that for each one. And I'm just really trying to get that wording into their head of yes. same side of the transversal. So I've got the words at the bottom of the slide there, on the same side of the transversal and in corresponding positions in relation to the parallel lines. And I'd say that kind of each time I show it. Yes. And then every time I talk about corresponding angles, I'm saying same side of transversal, corresponding positions. And I'm just saying that all the time. Got it. And are you... Are you... Uh, keen for a bit of a non-example at this point or you yeah, bring, you've not ruled that out just again so they've um, got something to contrast it against or is it too soon for that no you're right what I don't have um, only because I haven't kind of made the slide mm. of it is 
is um, examples, non examples of oh, corresponding yes. angles, and, and that would absolutely work. Um, you know, not same size of transversal, yeah. or not in corresponding positions, or not on parallel lines. Yes. So bear in mind that I'm looking at equal corresponding angles yes, here, and I've got yes. that at the top there. Um, I'm not averse to talking about F shapes at all. Mm. When I am doing angles and parallel lines problems myself, I see F shapes. Yeah, I, I mean, love it. so so I, I'm not against that, but I would also keep emphasising the same side of transversal thing. Got it. Got it. Um, there are some of these. I haven't made my own. There are yep. some of these on um, Johnny's website, nonexamples.com. Yes. So he has got examples, non-examples of corresponding angles. And let's call these equal corresponding angles, yeah, just to be really clear, because they're on parallel lines. And um, I could go through, say the first one, I'd say same side of transversal, corresponding positions. Next one as well, next one as well. On the other one, I'd say different side of the transversal. So not corresponding. Story, yeah. The next one I'd say, same side of transversal, not in corresponding positions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the next nice. one, different side of transversal. So that's why that word transversal is really clear. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Um, this is something from um, Mr. Rowlandson from oh, White yes. Rose. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. love his blog. And he's done um, a wonderful blog post about angles and parallel lines. And he showed some of the activities he's used to just really clarify the definitions. So here, he's just got right down if they're corresponding or not corresponding. I like this. Um, and there's, what I like about this straight away, there's, there's, there's no mention of alternate in there. Kids are not having to decide between different ones. Yeah. It's all just, yeah. is it this or is it not yeah. this? I like well, it. Because that's, that's what we're doing. We're trying to go into real depth on each of the definitions mm. and not jumbling them all up and just rushing through them. So just spending some time on... You know, I mean, look at question seven. That's that's a great question. It is a good question. I mean, as soon as you put two transversals in any diagram, it gets confusing. And the thing there is, they're on different transversals. So yes, they're not corresponding. Not. So again, that's something that perhaps wasn't in my original definition was the fact that they need to be on. So I say the same side as the transversal. Yeah, I'm talking about one transversal. One transversal. Yeah. And it's worth pointing out to the viewers here that these are you're going to be links to all this yes. and these are all available to download. So yes, don't, don't panic if you didn't quite catch where this is from. Lovely, Joe. Um, so this his blog is ponderingplanning.wordpress.com and he's saying that um, he's we could say, are these angles corresponding or not? Um, and he's saying this is this is kind of an examples non examples kind of task. Um, he's saying he wants them to write the word. He doesn't want them to just do ticks or crosses. He wants uh, them to keep writing that word corresponding or not corresponding, which is why he's got the blanks instead yeah, of a tick box. No, I like it. Those little things are so important. He's right? thought really carefully about how to get he's, them to remember. He's good. This. He's yeah. good. Um, he's also got this one, which is mark um, the corresponding angles to the one that's shaded. So in that first oh, one, we're going for the same yes. side of the transversal. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, there's lots of similar activities that aren't quite so specific. So I've seen things like this before, but this is very specific. That's really we are nicely, just looking at corresponding. really nicely laid out, that yeah. one. I mean, if you look at, I love again, that, I love eight. Look, seven. look at eight as well. Yeah, yeah no, that, that's a really interesting question, eight, because you'd need to extend that line. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this this right, this yeah. is your kind of boundary examples, right? Yeah, that, that, you're right. Yeah. That it's so in, the teacher choice over examples is so important because that's mm. going to determine students' understanding of the domain of this yeah. concept. And yeah. if, if we limit it to just standard stuff, that's yeah. all kids take it to be. Mm. Whereas as soon as we start chucking in things like that bottom row there, and that stuff I would never have gone anywhere near in my teaching. No, but absolutely, but yeah. if if we don't go near these, kids have big gaps in their yeah. in their understanding. Yeah. I mean, this is this is when we talk about teaching in depth and sort of really spending time exploring definitions and concepts. This is this the is kind the, of thing we mean. Uh, this yeah. is the resources we want. I love that. Um, and I think that's one more from Mr. Ronson. Um, use, sorry, I keep calling Mr. Ronson because that's what he calls himself on Twitter. It's Paul, is it? It is Paul, Paul yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Use your knowledge of corresponding angles to decide which ones contain parallel lines. So this is that, again, yes. that kind of non-example thing. So we know that if they're parallel, they should be equal, the corresponding angles. So question one, they are not parallel because those angles aren't equal. Yes, yes. So that's, again, looking at the kind of, you know, they are corresponding in question one but not, but not parallel lines i love it. do me a favor joe just flick back to so you've got here you've got the identifying whether they're corresponding or not mm -hmm. then if you go to the next one you have got um shade the figure out where the figure corresponding out, angle and is and then yeah. if you go to the next one you've got given the angles are they parallel it's yeah. three different ideas mm -hmm. all within this concept of yeah. corresponding angles yeah. And again, this is going to take time, but this yeah. is this is the de this is an investment in time. We're right? doing this a whole lesson on something that people normally spend five minutes. Oh on. yeah, and absolutely. there's plenty to do in this lesson. And it's an interesting oh, tasks. I mean, we're not getting bored on. with these tasks. They're great. No, you're absolutely yeah. right. Absolutely. Um, so now I'm going to look at alternate, which might be um, in a different lesson. Perhaps. Yes. 
Um, and we're saying, um, so again, just on the definitions, and we're going to look at problems in a minute, yeah, but let's yeah. just stick with definitions for now. Um, again, they don't have to be parallel lines for us to call them alternate. Um, also, I'm pronouncing it alternate. Do you pronounce it alternate or alternate? Alternate, I'm going right, for. Right, so we pronounce them differently. I don't know why, because I, I, I have two different... I say alternate in some situations, but for these, I call them alternate. I'm going to go one step further. This is the extent of my teaching on alternate angles, because the Z shape's going to come into play. Yes. We call them alternate. So um, is that yeah, in-depth? Is that the kind of in-depth teaching you're looking for there? Because <laughs> people call them um, the other ones... Corresponding, I guess. <laughs> Corresponding. Corresponding is alternate. <laughs> Viewers can have that one for free if they want there. That's in depth. So, um, well, I talk about, and I'll talk about in a minute about how to get to memorise, but I normally talk about the sort of end and start of the alphabet, so the Z and the A. That's how I make the connection between alternate uh -huh. and Z and Z angles. For, for responding you, you before alternate, yours, alternate. Alternate. Okay. Okay. So they're on, um, they're on opposite sides of transversal, and that's the key. I'm saying they're between the two lines, and, and a bit later I'll talk about how they they uh, that's we only look at the ones between. When mm. we talk about alternate angles in this country, we're talking about the ones between yeah, the parallel yeah, lines. Yeah. In America, they talk about exterior alternate angles, oh, which really? are on the outside. But we we just you know these things exist, but we we don't define them in our GCSE. Got it. So. We're talking about between the two lines, opposite sides of transversal. We shouldn't say alternate angles are equal. We should say alternate angles in parallel lines are equal. Got it. Um, so again, I look for Z shapes, but we don't have to use a Z shape. Um, we can use a definition. So in each of these, I would put it on the board separately and I would say um, they are between the parallel lines and they are on opposite sides of the transversal. And I would are keep you, saying that. Are you getting into, so a lot of schools love this choral response, right? Oh, are, yeah. you, are you getting into a bit of that with this? Have you um, ruled that out? The I, kids I've chanting got, that yeah, back I've at you? I've got an example coming up where I have used choral response and it's I've barely ever used choral response. And the funny thing is I, I kind of think I'm really nervous about doing it. But then um, an RS teacher in my school the other day was um, did a CPD session for the school where he showed he has a little icon and when he puts it up on his slide, it means this is a choral response slide right. and they all do it and they all love it so I'm thinking the kids in my school they do it all the time yeah, yeah, yeah. so I don't know why I'm I'd thinking be I can't I'd be do nerd. it I'd be nervous here <laughs> well I could imagine chanting that back right? yeah absolutely like so for each one you know you I mean I've done that before and when we do when we look at indices in another one of my sessions we'll talk about how I've used choral response yes for that but for this you could certainly point to it and say between the parallel lines on opposite sides of the transverse so I'm kind of point to the bits that you're talking about got it um why well it rotates so that's, that's, I think, a bit more confusing than the sliding thing. Although yeah. the idea of the acute is acute and obtuse is obtuse still yes, holds here. Yes. So, you know, in this case, they are the acute angles, so they're yes. equal. But um, this is Don Stewart's slide, and he's got it rotating round, and he's showing how those two got angles it. are equal. Got it. I tell you what, he needs to get that alternate angles on parallel lines, though, doesn't he? He does, Don. yeah, yeah. So does everyone. So does every textbook. Correct. Yeah. Um, this is a nice question. This is Don Stewart. Um... And the reason this is a nice question is, even if we don't kind of go through the angles in turn and look at A, B, C, and D, but if I ask students to figure out the value of angle C, mm. um, this is where they might assume it's 88. Yes. I mean, this is confusing because there's two transversals, but if, they, if we do some techniques which I'll talk about later in terms of we highlight the transversals, okay. perhaps in different colours, and we, and we sort of think about that sliding of the angles up mm. the transversal, mm. they'll realise that the C is something to do with the 88 because they're on the same transversal. But we, it's hard to tell the acute obtuse thing here because it's 88. Yes. So we can't just say C is acute or obtuse because it's it's quite close. Yes. So the mistake here would be to say um, to to say to to not know. Well, the, the complication is is C 88 or is C 92. Right. Okay. And um, what we can do here is we can talk about opposite sides of the transversal, um, but we have to they have to be between the parallel lines. I think I, I think see. this is uh, when I've talked to students about this before. This is this is tricky that those bottom two tricky. angles because but, you know I mean the way I would think about it is I would think of the vertically opposite angle, the eighty eight. Yes. And then I'd see an in, a co-interior angle. Yeah. Well, can can I ask on a wider point here then? So in terms of the sequencing of this, this has come after the kids are comfortable with corresponding angles. Are yeah. you happy then including examples like this where they've got corresponding angles in there to learn alternate or are you going to isolate the alternate I'd say, I'd say, before? Yeah. When do they it's come together? It's interesting because the problem is they start looking at questions where you can see the three different... Yeah, absolutely. Every question has all three absolutely. in. Absolutely. Um, and so at that point, um, they're, they're, they're getting into a mess with 
Um, oh, but I can see an F there, yeah. but I can see a Z yes. there. It's like, yeah, they're all there. They'll always all be there. Yeah. Um, but the, the thing with this is, and I might not show that whole diagram, but I might pull out that, that bottom bit mm. and say, look, that 88, the angle next to it on a, on, next to it on a straight line is 92. And now we are inside the parallel lines and we're on opposite sides of the transversal with the sea. It right. So okay. it's just kind of like pulling out that section and saying, what, how, how can we find an alternate angle to see? And I tell you what, it's important to show them things like that because can, kids can get a bit lazy with it, can't they? They think, oh, it's, it's always the same. You just mm. look, at, I just go by sight and so on. Oh, it's on. just it's the number on the diagram. Exactly. There's, there's one no, number, I, it has to be that I one. I like that, I like so, that. I mean, that I Slows don't, their thinking yeah. down, but in a good way. I, I think I like this, this is quite tricky and I might use it as, I don't know, this, this is a question that I'd have to sort of choose the timing sure, carefully. Sure, sure. But the interesting thing there is that assumption that C is 88. And that idea of, well, then they're, they're not inside the parallel line. So even though C and 88 are on different sides of the transversal, they're not inside the parallel line, yeah, so they're yeah. not alternate angles. Got it. Um, so obviously when you're doing this on the board, you're drawing all over it, and, and it's really helpful. As soon as you see that Z shape, then, then that's helpful, but it has to go with the definition for me now. So okay. it used to be that I just drew the Z shape. Yeah, and it's but, not but, enough, But, yeah, it? they're like, oh, I've drawn my Z, which bit? You yeah, know. exactly. And now it's like, well, they have to be between the parallel lines on opposite sides. I like that so example. There it it's nice one. Yeah. Now, there's a bit of a disagreement on what we call this. I was hoping you were going to mention this, yeah, because <laughs> I see about five or six different names for this bomb in a row. Well, people, if you can't call it supplementary. That's wrong. Right, well, that's, I mean, of course, I would have never have done that. So supplementary is <laughs> gone. And, and that's because supplementary because is very specific. It just means two angles at sum to 180. So it's nothing to do right. with this. I mean, they are two angles at sum to 180, but that's not acceptable in the exam because that's not the reason. That's, if you say supplementary angle sum to 180, you've basically gone around in a circle there. <laughs> Like, yeah, that's bad so, news. That so I mean, I've, I've, I've said it for years. I've so. taught that many yeah. a time. Okay, so supplementary is um, gone. We can't say that, and it's not acceptable in an exam, and it's wow. and it shouldn't be because it's you're you're giving the answer as the reason kind of thing. Yeah, okay. Um, we can say co-interior, which I never knew was short for consecutive interior. Consecutive, we know, is next to each other, and interior being inside. Say that again. It's short for consecutive interior, co-interior. Yeah. Crazy, isn't it? I've saying this word for years, we never know what it's short for. Yeah. Wow. So consecutive, next to each other, interior, in, in, inside. Never knew that. So they okay, are co-interior. So that's legit. You can use that one. You can one. use that. And you can also use allied. Where, where's allied come from? They're just know, like so you, they're mates with each other. I haven't, I haven't sort of um, researched that one because I don't use allied. I've never said it. Yeah. Well, I'm going to assume that because they're friends with each other. Like uh, so they're friends. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm sure there's a etymology reason yeah. behind it. Let's so co-interior angles. Well, so you use co-interior. I've always used. Well, since I stopped using. I'll, I'll tell you why. I, I'll tell you why I don't like co-interior. Um, I just. It's because it's got C at the beginning, like corresponding. Well, that's one issue, yeah. but then sometimes I draw the C, so that's not too bad. It's the interior bit, because then I think kids get confused with... Because oh. then they're not kind of... I mean, they are interior angles, but it's not like, the polygon. So, so we've got and, this thing about interior angles and polygons. Yeah, I see what you mean. Do you know what I mean? So it's you prefer to use... But I think the well, reason I... have been I, using supplementary, so that's, oh, okay. that, don't listen to me. So the reason I use co-interior is, you're right, because of the C shape, because I say look for the C yeah, shape. Yeah, me that's too. confusing, because corresponding starts with a C as well. God, so, I mean, really, we need these better definitions. So the definition is same side of transversal and inside the lines. And if those lines are yeah. parallel, then they're supplementary. I like it. I think I'm going allied. I'm going allied from now on. <laughs> so I go to the front of each um, That's from Edexcel. So they say you can say allied or co ah, okay, right, So they okay. give both um, as an option. Notice how they say alternate angles equal, which is just not true because it should be alternate angles. Edexcel need to sort themselves out um, there. But yeah, it's, 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 the thing is, it's a bit of a mouthful to have to write um, in corresponding angles in parallel lines are equal yeah. in an exam. So we know what they mean when students write that. Um, now, the question is, can we just teach one of the rules? Because actually, one of the rules can normally get yes, us there. Yes, yes. So, you know, can we just... So if we look at this one, say we'd only taught um, corresponding angles. Yep, okay. And we asked them to work out any other angle, and we asked them to give reasons. And they know um, angles in a straight line. line. And yep. they know vertically opposite. So if you've got those in the bag, they're laughing, right? Yeah, they can They can definitely get any angle yes, here, correct. as long as they know one of the three parallel line definitions. Yes, yes. Um, so can we get away with teaching just one? And why do they teach more in the US? Good question. Well, in the AQA um, teaching guidance, 
um, it, it actually specifies they need to know are alternate and corresponding. It doesn't mention co-interior or allied okay. at all. So we don't necessarily have to teach that. There are examples where it's very helpful. Yes. But we could leave that totally out of our teaching. That's interesting. And, but, but the reason, so if AQA has specified alternate and corresponding, and I'm presumably all the other examples have as well because this is from the, government, the DfE spec, then that would suggest that they could ask a question, which of these angles are corresponding? Yes. So we can't not teach these words. Okay. But it would also suggest they can't ask the question, which of these angles are co interior because that's not actually specified anywhere. That's interesting. Um, so we could because that's the worst one, isn't it? Right? Um, Out of all of them, yeah, because it's a different a model because the other yeah. two are equal yeah, and that's yeah, the yeah. one where they're supplementary. So, yeah, it's different to the others oh, and okay. it's a little bit annoying, okay. Um, but if you have a question like that, I mean, I'm going to do that with current interior angles, yeah. And the reason I'm going to do that, I'm going to always want to do that with current interior angles is because. Um, because I'd have to extend the lines if I wanted to use yes, the other definitions. Yes, yes. So, sure, I can do it with corresponding. If I extend the line, the transversal, by the G, then I can do my corresponding angles, 52 and 52, yes. and then I can do angles on a straight line add up to 180. Let me, let me ask, have we had, and apologies if I've, I've missed this, Joe, we, we've had the definition of co-interior. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah what, but I did it very quickly. I what, what, what is, do you know off the top of your head? So, co-interior, same side of the transversal, Inside the parallel lines. Got it. Now let me be awkward here. You know I love to chuck a little curveball into it. So is that a transversal there? Because it's not cutting the parallels. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I suppose. As long as it touches, is it fine? Yeah, because that's the same. Lines are infinite. So just because I've shown a line segment, it is still part of that line. Ah, right. So I that's, think, that's. It's interesting actually. It's a good question because I think if you look back at my non-examples of transversal, yeah. I might have had one that stopped on the line and didn't. Yeah, continue. it's interesting, yeah. isn't it? That's probably my one good question for this uh, topic in depth series. So let, let's make question. sure people heard. I that mean, one. we know that when we show a line segment, and it's you know, well, we know this is representing part of a line. We can yes, extend it. Yes, I see. Um, but the, I suppose the, so the thing is that if you and I solved this one, we would do it by current interior angles because we can do it in one step. Yes. But if we hadn't taught current interior angles, of course our students can still do this, but it's tougher because they have to extend the line and they have to give two reasons. Yeah. They have to give say corresponding, oh, they don't have to extend the line, but if they if they did, they'd do corresponding and angles on a straight line. Yeah. Or they could do the alternate. They could yeah. do the 52 and the 52, and again, angles on a straight and line. And it's worth a discussion there, the different, worth showing them the different way. If we're going deep yeah. and we've got time, it's yeah. worth showing them there's three different ways, yeah. there's, at least there's, three. There's, there's least always, three yeah. I mean, they, yeah. That, that sometimes upsets them that there's a number of ways, because they're, they're so sort of uh, trained in yeah, there is one, one way, way to, to do, do maths. And yeah, there's, there's always multiple ways in parallel lines. Yeah, in America they um, they teach, so they have their definition of transversal, um, and then they teach um, corresponding, yeah. alternate interior and alternate exterior. So that's the big difference, where we have alternate interior, which are between the parallel lines, but yes. they also do alternate exterior. They're outside the parallel lines, but they're still different sides you know of the transversal. I've always wondered if there was a name for that. They crop up a fair bit, don't they, in, yeah. in questions. And you, you, you kind of you can see they're equal, but for us to explain why they're equal, we've got we to go, do it We go through a route, step, don't we? Yeah, 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 to get there. Yeah, so in America, they would just write alternate exterior angles, whereas we would have to have a, a multi-step answer there. Um, which is, and, and you know, it's just not on our spec, but it doesn't yeah, mean they yeah, don't yeah. exist. Um, notice how they also have, um, they have supplementary angles where they're saying two or more. They say two or more. I'm pretty, I, I don't, this was just something I pulled off Google yeah, Images. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure supplementary is two angles. Got it. Um, vertical angles, we call them vertically opposite. Yeah. Um, I, I've had, I've worked with some American teachers recently where I had to do a list, I had to do kind of a list of the, the vocabulary differences and that was one of the ones because she, um, she kept saying vertical angles and I was like, well, actually, we call them vertically opposite. That's interesting. And, and do you know why we call them vertically opposite? No. Um, it's nothing to do with vertical. It's because they meet at a vertex. Because vertical makes you think up, down. Yeah, yeah, it does. But it's nothing to do with that. So why why, Ver why do they call them vertically? It's, it's just, it's, it comes from the word vertex. It means um, opposite angles that meet at a vertex. It's why nothing do to do with... Why do they call them like vertex? Vertexly. Opposite? Vertexly opposite. Because that's Jeez. not a word. Again, Joe, don't it just make you think... It's flipping hard maths, isn't it? Whenever you... The, the words that we use, it doesn't help, does it, a lot no, it of the time? No. I mean, given that, you know, we've been teaching a long time and we kind of don't have clear definitions Well, I've been words. surprised about 20 times already during this, haven't I? And <laughs> I'm supposed to know what I'm doing here, so. Um That last one, they're calling it consecutive interior. We call it co-interior, see? Indeed. Consecutive interior. There it is. Catch so so catch. we don't teach all that, um, and I think that's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah. That is interesting. Um, and so for them, we would say, see how they have the ah, regions, the yes. interior yeah, region and the exterior yeah. region. So they oh, say that's nice. one and eight are um, 
exterior alternate or alternate exterior because they are outside the parallel lines but they're on opposite sides of the transversal. That's interesting. And this is where you go through those real kind of... And I could see with that where if you then moved into polygons and interior and exterior, that that isn't a million miles away from how it works with polygons. So that diagram, I can imagine so, yeah, joining yeah. up a, another line and you've got to you know, making that a parallel. Yeah, I tell you what's quite nice is that they'll say the one and the three are interior and exterior um, that are next to each other that are supplementary, just like they would be in polygons. Yeah, yeah. that's all right. Yeah. That. Okay. I'm leaning um, towards this American way of thinking. Yeah, you know? but are they but they have more rules, and we're saying we actually only need two rules, and we can do oh, it all yeah. with that, yeah, or we can only do, we can do it all with one rule. Good point. And that's from an American exercise book, um, and it's where they they've given those descriptions and they've said the fact. And, you know, it's just really interesting to see that use of transversal that, that isn't so common. I'm not saying yes. teachers in this country don't do it, because a lot of teachers I've spoken to have started doing it. Yeah. But um, that is totally standard there to use the word transversal. Interesting, interesting. Um, I think what we'll do is then um, we'll have a look at the next sort of part of it. So we've looked at what all the definitions are. Yes. And now we're going to have a look at how we get our students to remember the words. Let's do it. Okay, so memorising the rules. So we had these these three words, and we've learned the definitions. So yeah. we have um, corresponding. For, which, corresponding. Corresponding. We have, uh, is it Zangles? No. Zalternate. <laughs> See, it's so, so memorable already, right? <laughs> Zalternate. And we had um, co-interior or allied, not supplementary. Got it. And we have to try and um, get our students to remember which is which. And we don't, it's annoying because they can already get the numbers right. Yeah. And this is literally just a kind of um, write the right, the correct words to get the mark in the exam sort of exercise. They can do the maths, they can get the numbers. And, and, and whether that's right or wrong, it doesn't matter. It's our job as a teacher to make um, sure that they know these things, right? Mathematicians need to be able to communicate. And, and when point. I've done this session before, I've, start, I've talked about the Ramanujan story, one of my favourite mathematicians. And, you know, he came over from India to work at Cambridge with... Hardy and I hope I get these facts right and he um, he was a genius and he had all this amazing maths in his head and he had all these proofs but he couldn't communicate yeah. them um, mathematicians um, need to be able to communicate so yes explaining things using the technical language is part of what mathematicians do Got it. Um, so I've always done it like this where I've talked about the Z and the A and I use that image of bookends and okay. I hope the bookend image sticks with them. Yeah, and nice I say um, Z and A are opposite in the alphabet, and that's how we remember the alternate angles we're looking for okay. a Z shape. Okay. Um, I don't necessarily focus on the Zs and Fs as much as I used to, but this is how I used to okay. do it. Okay. Um, the um, and then I would say. You've sold me on the top one. I'll tell you now what is going on with this FC <laughs> thing. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> I just say the FC like football club right. and then I talk about and then they can say their favourite football club and whatever I don't care I don't know, is that what's that Fulham, Fulham yeah, yeah okay yeah. Um, and so we say um, if they see an F shape they think FC football club because they for FC everyone knows FC goes together yeah but the thing is, um, I don't really do this anymore because now I'm all about the transversal right, and the and okay. I and I'm really, I'm not saying let's look for F so much. I'm saying, oh look, they're on the same side of the transversal, so it's a corresponding angle. Uh, what do, all right, okay. What are you? I mean, I'm still sticking to Zoltan and corresponding. I'll tell you that much for free. What are you doing for the uh, for the? Allied slash. Well, well, then I'm saying it, it begins with a C and it's in a C shape. Right, that, but, that, but it's yeah. not great. It's not great. No, I've never had anything good for that. No. No. Okay. Um, and I do my chanting, so my choral response here. So I get my. I mean, I'd like to have a, a pointing stick. I use a meter ruler, but I'd really. You talk me through what this would look like. So, like so I, I'd point to the first one. Um, now they can either say the way I've done it before is they've all just said together alternate angles, and I point to the next one, and they said corresponding angles. Or they said alternate angles are equal, corresponding angles are equal, corresponding angles are equal, co interior angles add to 180. So the whole class will choral response say it when I point to it. Okay. I don't know the best way of doing choral response because I've not done much of it. So That's I'm very keen to hear ideas and of you're how not, teachers do it. Just on this, you're not that bothered if they're not, you're not emphasising the um, alternate angles are equal in parallel lines because because they don't need no. it for the GCSE. We've, you've, no. You're happy you've established the understanding. I think, I, think of we've, that. I think once we establish that they are still called alternate if they're not in parallel lines, but they're only equal if they are. I think, yeah, You're I don't right want to that. kind of keep bringing okay. those words okay. in. Um, I think, you know, I want them to do as little writing as possible, really. I just feel like in every lesson they go to, they're doing loads of writing, yes. and I just want to minimise that and focus on, on and, the numbers, And we really. mentioned it in an earlier part of this topic in depth, but, yeah, chanting is something I've, I have always been reluctant to do, but yeah. when I see it in action, it's magic. The kids yeah, love yeah, it, right? they do love it, they do. Um, and the thing is that it depends. If you've got difficult behaviour, then some of them might be silly with it, and mm. then that's not an appropriate thing to do with that class. But if you've got this kind of... If you've got this... The sort of students who are who are gonna 
sort of stand there all lovely and go alternate angles miss and they all say it together yeah, and it's yeah, like what yeah. a delightful moment and, right. and they're saying it out loud makes a big difference well maybe I don't know what the research is like saying it out loud I, like I don't know I mean if, they, if, if these things work in kind of MFL and stuff like that then why you know why don't we try them in maths um, I don't oh, do things like this what is going no one's getting out their seat in my lesson no way <laughs> but um, if um, it, this is you know so this was an American teacher who was saying that they would say alternate angles and the kids would like jump oh, into the position dancing. so they're right, moving okay. position and actually there's lots of parallel line things you can do with, with masking tape it's, yes it, you know, yes okay now yeah they're not getting out their seats in my lesson but a bit of fitness they're not even allowed to sharpen their pencil you know they're not, no, they're not moving why, but, why should they um, yeah but um, if, if people like this kind of active thing then there's loads you can do with it. Absolutely loads. I love it. Um, now, this is where I think, um, in terms of retrieval of those angle facts, so like, like getting them to remember what the, what the words are, yes. this is just a waste of time, isn't it? So if we have a worksheet called Corresponding Angles, yeah. and in this one they say, oh, look, A is 60 because the, the angles yeah, are corresponding. You're right. This yeah. is the kind of blocked practice yeah. that requires no thought, yeah. and yeah, it's this illusion of understanding. So the kids think they're getting it, yeah. and the teacher thinks they're getting yeah. it when they all get it and right. And the teacher's but, thinking, well, it's fluency. And, and yeah, yeah, we like it's... a lot of practice, but in this case, every single answer is the number written down, yeah, and weird. every single answer is corresponding Do you know what, Joe? I'm, I'm glad you brought this up, because fluency Fluency is often gets tarred with this negative brush, doesn't it? Whereas mm. this, this bad fluency. I mean, this is mm. this is just nothing, this right? Is, this, yeah, is, this, this is this is nothing. Fluency, this, yeah. Whereas I admit to having done this before. Oh, yeah. God, my sister's <laughs> about the first eight years of my teaching is ran full of this stuff. But yeah, it, it serves no purpose whatsoever, as a, 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 apart from giving kids this false impression that they understand what's going on here, and they don't. They don't. Um, so let's look at something that might be better. Okay. Now this is Don Stewart, and it's give a reason why. Okay, okay, so I might say, give a reason why A equals C. I've done this with some uh, my really challenging year 11s last year who were kind of um, foundation but had, had like they'd never seen us before. Yes. They were great at this exercise okay. and, they, and they really got into it. And, and it's not that sort of pointless practice, yes, but it is still yes, fluency. Yes, yes. So they're saying, um, so I'm choosing one at a time to answer this. Okay. Vert vertically opposite. And you could have this mini whiteboards as well, There's right? all sorts of ways we could do this. Yep. C equals, why does C equal E? And then, oh, look, alternate. Yeah, so they're opposite sides of the transversal. They're inside the parallel lines. They are alternate angles. Why does C equals G? Well, they're different. The same side of the transversal. They're in corresponding yes. positions, so they are corresponding. And so you know we could do that. And um, you've not ruled out chucking a bit of a non-example in here, right? Like why does why does C equal H or something like that? Uh, yeah, and the thing the interesting thing about this is this is one slide from Don Stewart. Yeah. This could be a whole massive exercise of exercise, loads of stuff like Beautiful. this. Beautiful. And, it, and it's just you know it. we're not saying here's a sheet on corresponding angles. Tell me the numbers and yeah, tell me they're all yeah, corresponding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're having to retrieve the different angle facts they've learned. They're having like to it. pull on all of that information. Um, and I've, I've used this one since, this is CIMT and I've used it since the first year of teaching, but I've sort of changed the way I use it. Um, you can say to them, right, so I used to say, pick someone in the class and I say, tell me what angle B is. And yes. they would say, oh, it's 50 because it's an alternate angle. Mm. But the interesting, this is another one of those um, activities where you can get all those angles with all the different yes, moves. Yes. I mean, the, the interesting one is F at the bottom because you have to see that angle in a triangle and they never see that. Yeah. But the funny thing is, it's the angle in the bottom triangle and the angle in the big triangle yeah. and they never see that. Um, and then you could say, oh, angle C. Well, if we've already got angle B, then that's just angles on a straight line. Yes. But then someone else will say, oh, but I got it because it was yeah, a co interior yeah, yeah. angle. That's nice. And so actually, the way I've used this in the past, I haven't said... Let's look at all the different ways we could get these angles. But that's actually more that's interesting a, than yeah, the way I've nice done it in the past, yeah. which has been like, oh, you know, tell me angle B. Yes, correct. Move on. I like it. And it's again, same resource, but just tweaking yeah, the question a little bit makes it, it yeah. deepens the thought. Um, I was thinking about some strategies. Okay. So I was thinking, you know, for early problem solving, say we've got a slightly more complicated problem with multiple angles, mm. what are the things that might help students? So I thought, first of all, just figuring out where are my parallel lines? So maybe I'll use a highlighter on those, yeah, this sort yeah. of thing I might encourage them to do. Yeah. Where, which ones are transversal? Are there different transversals? In which case, can I do them in different colours? Or, you know, how am I going to pick out these different things? Um, perhaps if I see a Z and I'm thinking, oh, there's a Z angle there, perhaps I'd highlight that. You know, there's all these things students can do to just figure out a really complicated problem. Um, perhaps they mark every angle on the diagram as they work it out and not try and hold that in their head. Yes. Perhaps they turn the paper around if it helps. You know, sometimes they can't see that Z till they turn the paper. Um, and then reminding them all the time, don't forget your angles in a triangle, yeah. all that kind of thing. There's all these little things we can do. Let me ask you something here, Joe. I'll, I'll tell you where, I, where I've hit, hit a brick wall in the past with this, mm -hmm. is that the kids... 
they like finding the size of the angles, but they hate giving the reasons. It's the giving the reasons that slows their, th- it slows them down. They can't be bothered doing the writing Absolutely, and yeah, so on yeah. and so forth. Yeah. What, how do you kind of encourage them to do both? Because both are important, right? They've got to know what the size of angle B is or whatever. But they've also, as we've said at the start of this little section, they've got to be able to justify it. What, what do you... What do well, you... for one thing, I'm going to... I'm not asking four sentences. A bullet point is absolutely ah, okay, fine. Right, I mean, okay. they're going to get the marks for a bullet point. Um, you could argue that maybe I'm not doing my bit towards literacy there. But <laughs> I really am happy with a bullet point, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, because, yeah. again, I, I'm really worried about do they know the maths? Do they understand the maths? Can yes. they get the numbers? And a bullet point's fine. Okay. I'll show you in a minute another thing, an activity that I've written when we talk about resources okay. I wrote an activity to try and get round that the, the, the fact that the writing slows it down yeah, and they're not getting through enough practice so I have come out of a resource Love that, a good that teaser there, Joe. That, um, keep the viewers that, that hooked like it. Um, we'll go straight on to look at misconceptions because I think actually misconceptions is um, this is really interesting because I, I crowdsource this from Twitter and this is this is I so cool so this. Yeah, so yeah, yeah this was a few years ago and I and I thought I was I was writing this presentation and I thought you know what, I, I, I'm fine with this topic. My students always do really well in it. I can't even think of anything they get wrong. And then, um, obviously that's ridiculous. Um, it's just that I hadn't ever thought about what the misconceptions are. So I went on Twitter and I um, and these were all, I've wow. shrunk them down. These were all the separate responses I got. And people can, um, viewers can download the slides. Yeah, but I'm going to show you basically, right? don't read all those because <laughs> I've, I've grouped them into kind of five key points. Okay, so they're, okay. They're all, there's sort of five things that are coming out here. So the first one is thinking that co-interior angles are equal. Yes, so, so that's the one where we have three rules. We have uh, corresponding angles are equal, alternate angles are equal, co-interior angles are not equal. They, yeah, they add annoying. up to 180. Yeah. So like, for example, in this one, in the one on the right, thinking that C is 70. 70 yeah. um, and actually, this comes up a lot on bearings. I mean, bearings is yeah. a great use yeah, of parallel yeah, lines. It's yeah. a great way of coming back to it in later years. Yes. But in this one, they work out, they do 360, subtract 329, they'd be really happy they've done that. They've got a number there. And then they're, let's say they're being, well, let's think about what they could be asked, but they're going to they're gonna think yes, that's the same as course, the one, the interior one. And this inside. is your little example of a bit of cognitive load, because they put a lot of thought into trying to get that what that angle at A yeah. is. Yeah. They take a mental breather, yeah. switch off a bit, and then just assume it's the same. You, yeah. it's, it's often that final step in a multi-stage process where the mistake comes into yeah, play. Yeah, and I think it's um, you know, is it is it that they didn't understand the rule? Is it that just, you know, yeah, like you say, there's too much going on. There's mm. all sorts of things. Yeah. But the um, that's a common one. Um, another really common thing we see here is assuming lines are parallel yeah, when they're not parallel. Yeah, so yeah, here yeah. it would be saying that angle X is 85 because yes. we're seeing a Z shape. Yes, yes. Um, so that's something we need to look out for because, um, you know, that is that is so common. And we see that quite a lot in circle theorems. You so, do. So... Um, and so just, just on this, just yeah. as a general point, the, these are super useful for, obviously, for teachers to know, but also to show the kids, right? And, oh, yeah, absolutely, And, and to yeah. say, the, where do you think students yeah. go wrong with this one? Yeah, and the thing is, like, things like this one, you might come back to this in year 11, and, and what we know is that students are going to say that angle Z is 63. Yes. Whereas we know that angle X is 63 because they're angles in the same segment. Mm. This is circle theorems. Mm. And yes. there's no, and that means that X and Y, Sorry, Z, Z and, and Y are the same because yeah. their angles in the same yeah, segment. Yeah. This is really hard. This is circle theorems. But certainly we don't have angle Z is 63 because we don't have any parallel lines yes, there. So yes, we shouldn't yes. be looking at a Z shape yes. there. Um, so that's where talking too much about Zs is dangerous because yeah. we're seeing Zs in other places. And it comes back to the non-examples we've been talking about yeah. all throughout this. Yeah. It's crucial that kids are exposed to examples where things don't work as much as yeah. they are where they work. Lovely, Joe. Um, third misconception, um, more than one transversal yeah, totally blows my mind. Up, yeah. And this is where I would say, you know, I, I maybe would use like a pink highlighter on that top transversal, and then I might use a blue highlighter on that bottom transversal, and I'd say that if you think of that sliding, you think of the angles sliding down the transversal, then we know the E kind of matches up with the, the, the yeah. 82 area, and the D matches up with the 1, 2, 5 area, because we've got that, we're only allowed to slide up and down transversals. Yes. And I think, um, I think that's really helpful, but that's, that's, that really confuses them. As soon as you've got two transversals, they're going to Especially when they look a bit parallel. Yeah, I mean, well. they're going to be matching up that E with that one, two, five. Of course yeah. they are. Um, then the, the sort of fourth thing, which let's say is not a misconception, it's um, a reason uh, uh, where we're losing marks at GCSE, is things like not giving a reason, but just giving a calculation. Yep. So writing down, you know, 180 minus something and thinking that's a reason. 
Um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, because yeah. so, we, you know, we we drum into them. They have to show their workings, yeah. and then actually, that's not always it's not what enough. We, what we, we need. need that word in there. That's um, interesting. Mixing up reasons, so getting those words confused. Yes. You know, um, I saying alternative instead of alternate. <laughs> These are things that people on Twitter told me. Yeah. And then not giving full reasons, so just writing corresponding, corresponding angles, angles and not yeah. writing corresponding angles are equal, and even that is not quite right. Yeah, but yeah, that's just just that kind of half reasons. So that's where then I wouldn't call these misconceptions. They're just places where students yeah, but are important. using important, absolutely marks. right. Yeah. Um, so what we'll do is, so that was, um, so we've kind of come to the end of uh, the explanations and the and the misconceptions, and we'll have a look at just to finish off. We'll look at some nice resources. For Everyone loves a resource. Everyone Joe. loves resources. Okay, so resources for angles and parallel lines. There are many, and okay. I've already shown a few that I particularly like. Um, now. I don't know if you know. Uh, she's got. She changed her Twitter handle now. But this was a, uh, this was a a tweet, from Ruth, okay. saying that we should. Uh, the term master is, is is problematic. So we should use slop. slop. Have you heard of slop? I have. Heard, I yes. have. Yes. So that's shed loads of practice. I've, I've heard and... another word for s in there, but yeah, <laughs> so, shed's good. So we are going to look at resources where we can do loads of practice. Yep. Because even though we've talked about sort of teaching us in depth and really going into all that detail and really being careful about what we do, we we Good do need to do loads of practice Absolutely. for every topic. Um, now, Don Stewart has a ton of lovely stuff. Um, the thing I like about Don Stewart's questions are they are challenging, they start off accessible, they get really challenging. Yes. Um, anything, if you go to Don Stewart's blog and look up angles and parallel lines, there's loads, loads of nice stuff. Loads I'd love him stuff. to put the answers, you know, Joe. I'd love the answers. Eh? I think I think his argument was that um, students um, he would set things for homework and his yeah, students would point. go and look for them on there. And, so. it, and it forces me as a teacher to do do the questions as well, which yeah. is it, which is a yeah. big thing. Well, here's one where I've taken a Don Stewart piece and I've done the answers. So okay. this is um, I took some Don Stewart questions. And yeah, I know Don. He doesn't mind me sort of plagiarizing his okay. results. Okay. But I I've taken parts of his his work. And I've kind of tweaked the activity. And, I, you know, I could have written my own, but I just, you know, yeah. the idea is I wanted some slightly trickier questions. Okay. And then the idea here is, see, I want them to tick the angle facts. You know, we talked earlier about how we don't want to spend ages writing out those angle facts. So I've got this little grid. Okay. So let's say to work out angle A, we work ah, out A, okay. we write down the answer, and then we're going to tick the facts oh, we geez, use. But nice. not just, this is the point in this exercise, it's not just the fact we used because sometimes we use a number of them mm -hmm. and I want them to remember that if they're giving say they had to use angles on a straight line and something else I need them to remember that they have to mention angles on a straight line in their answer yes. so the idea here is they have to tick everything they use okay nice so like they're it. saying um they're saying they tick in the box and they're going through each one and they're saying well for this one I use angles and triangles and I also used alternate angles and yes, that kind of thing nice. and the idea is that at the end they compare to their partner and I've specifically chosen questions where I think that students will have used different approaches and at the end they'll say have we got the same ticks yes. and if not can we um, figure, can you follow your partner's thinking can you see the alternative way of doing it. Now, um, I've I, I made it, I loaded it up onto Tez, and I haven't taught this topic since, so I haven't used this yet, but I will try it out this year. Nice. I'm going to be this is on it. Tez available to download for free. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, I just thought a slightly different approach without all the writing, although there might be value in the writing, but also that idea of there are multiple ways of doing these questions, and when we give reasons, we have to say everything we did. I love that, and I love the idea of trying to follow your partner's approach. Yeah. Nice, Joe. Um, this one is uh, Kazoom Maths, um, and I just look at, there's some really tricky ones. Look at question F. I'm stuck on C for a start, forget it. I've not even oh, got to so F, F and C are really similar, so let's look at C. Now... That's uh, you can't you can't as, as far I as I know there, as right? far as I know you can't do it without drawing another parallel line in the middle. This is your kind of super advanced parallel mm, line stuff. That's this nice. Is, that's yeah, nice. there's no way that you can you can say you've taught parallel lines and you're done if you haven't just done some really yeah. tricky questions. These boundaries, are, so I like yeah. it. I yeah. Like so it. there's, I mean, all of this is tricky stuff. Yeah. Um, we can bring some algebra in all the time. I mean, Interleaving in there, yeah. absolutely. Um, and actually, it's surprising how hard students find. As soon as you bring algebra into angles, it kind of blows their mind. Yeah, that absolutely. is um, and that one is a fairly straightforward. You've got three n plus two n equals one eighty. Mm. You know, that's kind of as, as easy as it gets in a way. Or a slightly easier one, I suppose, might be a corresponding angle there with a three n and a number. Yes, at the bottom. yes, yeah. yes, yes. But um, you know, this is this is gorgeous. That looks hard and it's not. This is lovely. I've given this to every class I've ever taught since I discovered it. 
And this is one of my favourite activities in the whole world. Wow, where are you getting that from? Where's that one from? That one's from um, an American, uh, Matthew McMatheson's a Twitter handle. I actually can't remember the name of the teacher. Um, and it's, um, it's, there's a whole load of them on the blog. And it, the thing is, it looks hard, but you know, they, as, yeah, soon as, as soon as they realise how accessible this is, then you can have even students who really struggle normally and who would never do this very quickly think yeah, they're doing something side. amazing. Because you know, all they're doing here is saying that um, 60 is equal to A plus yeah. 30, so they've got it's, that it's, first It's one. like one of your traditional angle chases, but yeah, a bit, it's, a bit it's of a, a bit twist in yeah. there. I like and, that. and there's a few like that on that website. I, I love absolutely it. love that. I like angle chases in general. Yeah. Um, that one, um, I think I took that one from Dr. Frost, but that is... Angle chases are everywhere, and good. I, they're very good, though, right? I love an angle chase. I think my students don't love them quite as much. You know, yeah. I think they are nothing but fun. Like, I love it. I love yeah. an angle chase. It goes back to my point before. My kids get annoyed when I insist they put the reasons in. They're like, it's slowing me down. Oh, I wouldn't make you do that in an angle chase. Oh, oh that takes that, the fun out of an yeah, angle okay, chase. Angle chase is, is a chase. Okay, that's where I'm going. Right? Yeah, mine's more. <laughs> um, a crawl. I think the thing is, maybe I don't get them to write the reasons enough. I don't know. Um, there's, Who knows? there's probably value in doing it. Um, Brilliant.org always has your really challenging problems. So, you know, we have, um, given that the three of th all three horizontal lines are parallel, find the red angle there. And, and it's totally doable with your standard angle facts. Right, but okay. But if you, if you have, if you really want to push, you know, if you want to, if you're coming back oh, to this with a, so. with a kind of higher year 11 class and they've done parallel angles and parallel lines before, yeah, bring in some of this really oh, tough stuff. That's lovely, I like it's that. It's totally accessible, yeah, this. There's, yeah, there's nothing nice, in that. It's they unusual, can't do. isn't it? That's yeah. what's nice about it. And Brilliant it. has tons like that. Um, this is the hardest I've seen. Right, this is I can't, from, I'll tell you now, no. I can't do stuff this like is, this. This is from Five Triangles, and actually the first one is totally doable. <sighs> Speak for yourself. But the, the second one, you know what? I, I spent about a day when I was meant to be planning lessons and doing admin and stuff. I spent an entire day trying to work that one out. I can't remember. I think it was the second one. And in the end, I asked my colleague Harry to help me, and he couldn't do it. And then we had this colleague, Amelia, who was NQT, and she'd just been on a course where she'd been told she'd been playing around with lots of paper folding. Right. And I'm really dismissive of that kind of thing. And she got this piece of paper out, folded it, solved She's the problem in it. about five seconds. And um, it just shows that, you know, my I was limiting myself with my pen and paper yes. approach. But yeah, that was, um, the, the, you can, they use wow. nothing but angles and parallel lines. Well, where do you say you got that one from? That's five triangles. Five triangles. Yeah. Too many triangles for me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, again, really stretching our students. This is John Stewart, but this is proofs. Wow! So again, it's, it's more interleaving in. It's more interleaving. Yeah. It's so lovely. this could be either at the end of teaching angles yes. and parallel lines, or this could be, hey, it's year eleven and we're doing some geometric proofs, and we're going to bring in some parallel yeah, lines. Lovely. Um, lovely. It's not as bad as it looks. That the larger base angle of a parallel is bisected, so that's confusing. We'd have to pull that apart yes. and show that the three triangles must be isosceles. And as soon as you start filling them in, it all just falls out. I mean, yeah, we know that you'd lovely. be writing your one hundred eighty minus b all over the place and all that sort of thing. And it, we all know that these things. Just I'll tell you, what, you can write a resource, can't you, Don Stewart? Hey. Oh yeah, he he's got he's got pages and pages of these. He is out of this world. Yeah. yeah. So there's tons, you know, to say I've to teach this topic in <laughs> say two lessons, you can see how that's bonkers. Yeah, there is yeah, so yeah. much we yeah, can do. Lovely. Obviously, on my blog, I've got a load listed. So yes. if you go to my blog and go to the uh, the shape page. I've got tons of recommendations on there. Love it. Um, the topic takes us on to quadrilateral properties, uh, bearings, loads of parallel lines there. Similarity, you can bring lots of parallel yes. lines in there. And of course, circle theorem. So it's going to lots of places. It's opening up lots of topics. And it's really parallel lines becomes a pretty core knowledge. Like it's quite an important topic in secondary maths. And it, we're interleaving it. We're coming back to it in all these topics that follow. So it's, wow. it's quite a big deal. Um, so... You can see that there's a lot we can do here. We could teach this for weeks and weeks. There is a lot we can do there, Joe. And that, that's been fascinating. That. And I wonder if, if listeners, maybe you've got your own favourite resource for angles in parallel lines. Maybe you've got your own strategy that you can use. How does all this stuff that Joe's spoken about fit into your planning? How does it fit into the way that you approach teaching? Is there some stuff you've used before? Have you used it in the same way Joe mentions? Is there some stuff that you haven't seen before? How would it fit in? And is there some stuff that are absolute bankers for you that we've not talked about? The idea for these Topic In Depth series is it, it arms you with not just resources but ideas for using these to really get your kids thinking hard and again the, the, the standard comeback from this is I don't have time to do this mm. but 
if you can free up time in the short term, it's going to save you so much more time in the long term, which you're not going to have to keep going back over all yep, this kind definitely. of stuff. And this is just episode one, Joe. We've got more topic in depth <laughs> to come. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, all resources um, are available to download from Joe's Resourceaholic website. There'll be a link to that um, on Joe's homepage. Thank you so much for listening. And thanks so much for Tez for supporting this topic in depth series.